It can be someone famous. It can be your neighbor. It can be someone from your family. It can be a kid. You just try to observe this person. Learn about this person, trends, characteristics, how this person reacts, about this person's perception, what does this person like, and try to borrow this complex of characteristics. And you will see that your personal life will change accordingly. So borrowing identities, um, it's a psychological uh, and neurological technique that has been used like back in the 50s and 60s, but with different intent. So we use it widely in order to teach people how to become more creative. If you like one particular artist, observe this person, try to learn from this person, and try to try it on his uh, way of thinking, his attitude, his characteristics, his personality trends, and you will see how your personal outcomes will adjust. Capture innovative ideas. Sometimes we have so many ideas and then we just forget about this. It's always great to have uh, like a book of creative thoughts or something like this. And you just keep writing and one day you will be surprised how many amazing ideas you have. And who knows, maybe you just put it all together and then make a proposal and then you get granted for the rest of your life. You have to mix unlikely ideas and analyze images and dreams because this is a whole separate topic but I also talk about this in my book. Sometimes your dreams are very meaningful, especially if you are an intuitive person and you're spiritual, sometimes your dreams give you unbelievable ideas and probably you do know that many great inventors got their ideas from their dreams. So that's a, 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 a big contribution. Promote imagination, daydream, relax, pay attention to the environment and become immersed in activity. You know some children are tending to daydreaming in school and teachers who uh, does not understand about creativity will say like, oh, he's not with me all the time, he's somewhere else, he's daydreaming. As a matter of fact, those kids are the most creative thinker. Thinkers. So when they grow up, they come up with unbelievable ideas because when you are daydreaming, your mind gets into the state of elaboration ideas, which is important and critical for creativity. This is just a simple exercise that you can do every day while on the train or driving. Just pick any word that you like and combine them into one sentence, into a poem, into a song, into something else. Combination promotes creativity and changes the way you think. Take control of your thoughts, find guidance, live in the present. This is very important. Many people live either in the past or they dream about their future. So they literally lose the moment. And when you lose the moment, you really don't enjoy it much. And when you don't enjoy it much, you cannot fully explore your creative potential. So it's very important. Here and now, that's what's important. Be grateful. Focus on pleasant individuals. If you don't like someone so badly, and this particular person is constantly keep putting you down and down, instead of complaining and saying, he's this and he's that, I cannot stand him, just do not be around this individual. Come up with some creative idea how to avoid those individuals. And I understand sometimes it's our family members or friends or someone you cannot avoid. So just be creative. Try to dedicate your time and your personality to someone who is smiling to you, who is pleasant, who is telling you positive things and who makes you feel outstanding. Accept change. Remember, each day is a new day. Take it easy. Sometimes we overreact, and overreaction is not contribute toward creative thinking at all. Turn everything into a game. Smile, change directions anytime, nurture yourself, and find your voice. And I know this whole event is about finding your voice, so creative techniques will bring a great deal to finding your personal voice. To get what you have never had, you must do what you have never done. When was the last time you did something for the first time? 
Think about this, and I bet it was a long time ago. So start doing something for the first time. It will boost your creative thinking drastically. Okay, you have to overcome habits that need breaking, attitude that need adjustment, weaknesses that they, they need strengthening, self-improvement projects. So think about your own things that you want to improve or overcome. Better creative insight equal greater happiness. Creative thinking help you solve problems, become successful, and assure security. Change your life through creative thinking. Just be creative. <laughs> Any questions? Any from neurology, psychology, creativity, sociology, law, policies? Those are my backgrounds. Yeah. <laughs> Hi. Yeah. You mentioned um, self confidence and, in general, confidence as a precursor to creativity. Right. How do you think that plays into women in creative fields, and why is it different across different creative fields? For instance, there are many women musicians, but the for composers, when it comes to having the confidence to make your own music, it's very much skewed towards men. And in other fields, such as visual arts, women are very prominent. So why do you think this is the case? We started from the very beginning with the statement that there is no box. If you have heard many times in your life, you try to have to try to think outside of the box and everything. There is no box. The problem is we create our own boxes. And those women that do not believe that they can compose you know, better than many of those men, they created, unfortunately, this box and it's very difficult for them to step out and to demonstrate because some of them are afraid to be judged that's a big one men they have a bigger ego so for them it's okay i'll be judged but you know let me show you who the doctor women they are more like okay you know what i don't want to be judged i have been judged on so many occasions already i don't want one more i better wait i better stay but once again it also depends on what culture we're talking about. Some people who are coming from specific cultures, they are not afraid to be judged. And I'm talking about women, and I started my presentation from sharing a little bit of my background, coming from a family of two great scientists, and my, from Eastern Europe, and my mom was a professor of biochemistry. She never even was thinking about being judged, and this is pretty much a manly man area of expertise and uh, many women if you see those Olympics uh, in mathematics and physics and chemistry for some reason we think oh this is a man area of expertise because men they are more like in-depth thinkers and then can focus and concentrate but the bottom line we create our own boxes we create our own limitations and sometimes we do not want to explore ourselves just not to be judged one, judged one more time. So if you step out of your zone of comfort, zone of comfort is very important for every single woman. Not to say it's not important for every single man. But women, they used to be, they create the zone of comfort and sometimes we just keep complaining. Oh, why I'm housewife, why I'm this, why I'm that. But as a matter of fact, this is the choice I have made sometimes, not, you know, not always, but sometimes. So we have to step out of the zone of comfort and say, okay, I'm good at this. Let me show the world. And I'm not afraid to um, be judged by anyone, by other women, by men. And so this is my opinion. Right. But once again, it's very culturally sensitive. We have to really keep in mind always that we all are common with different backgrounds, and some people were trained from a very early childhood. There are areas you can go to, there are some you cannot. There are things you can do, there are things you better not. So whatever we learn in our childhood, it impacts our future decisions. Not to say that I know many women who would come from this type of background, but then they just break those boundaries and they just crash the entire world and they become the most wonderful leaders. But they keep talking about how difficult it was to break those boundaries, how difficult it was to step out of 
you know, these bugs that we have created for ourselves. Right. I guess my question was sort of, why do you think women have gained prominence in certain creative fields, but not others? And how does the confidence factor affect that? I think it has to do with cliché that, as you just said, like, for example, give me an example of those uh, artistic fields, like artists. There are many women who right. are artists and everything. Uh, composers, I do know many because I was working on international channel as well as on radio and I have been interviewing multiple professionals from all over the world and there I did are, have there unbelievable <laughs> women who were composing and they were musicians and everything. Competition is tough. We live in a very competitive world and not to say that uh, you know, we don't have uh, competitors who are men and extremely talented, so it takes probably your own ego and a lot of personality traits, and uh, I don't want to say that uh, men are more rough and tough and they would break those boundaries and go, but uh, sometimes women they just do not have enough of those personal characteristics, has nothing to do with their talent, has nothing to do with uh, their um, desire to achieve. Maybe some personal traits, maybe, but there is no difference scientifically proved between right. uh, creative thinking between men and women. So if you want to hear uh, that there is something the way we think, no, women actually are more multitasking than men. So that's, uh, yes, but uh, we all creative, we all are born creative. And it has to do with our own beliefs and with those cliches that exist in our contemporary world. Right. Yeah. How can we appreciate the effectiveness of the creativity in the media? In the media? Yeah. Well, that's a good one. It's very interesting. And Dr. Yuchena and I, we are long-term friends and we always discuss uh, uh, this uh, idea from one perspective, when we're talking about journalism, we're saying journalists uh, must be uh, very uh, specific, objective, uh, not create something like uh, extra, not to change uh, you know, the stream of ideas and everything. From another perspective, in order to be a successful journalist, and once again, Dr. Etienne helped me a lot uh, on this topic when I was writing this book, uh, every journalist must be creative in order to uh, come up with original ideas, in order to show the flow, in order to see how everything in this world is interrelated, because if you want to um, reflect one particular um, uh, moment, historical moment, you really have to understand so many different background sounds, including economy, history, politics, uh, people, culture, language, geography, uh, proximity, uh, space, everything. So if you will not be creative, if you will not be able to combine all of those ideas and thoughts and yet understand the flaw, understand from the perspective of systematic thinking, then I guess you will not be able to be objective enough. Because I think this is uh, one of the problems that uh, some journalists, they uh, just take one particular event, describe it, and then it's kind of isolated from the whole surrounding. <coughs> and then we do not get an objective picture. So creativity plays a crucial, crucial role uh, in media. And uh, I would even recommend to implement classes on creative thinking for uh, the future journalists. So this is something for you to think about. Actually, what, I, I want to ask a question. Your presentation seems to have suggested that um, creativity is about being careful, planning and stuff. But I also know that some people who are, like they say, innovation is disruptive. There are a lot of people who, I don't know whether you're, you're familiar about, about the black swan, where people just do stuff out of the blues. You know, something, oh, yeah. Absolutely. You know, it just becomes crazy and yet it turns out to be nice, you know? Yeah. And uh, when you've not really given clear thoughts, you know, about 
the person or Okay, I have an answer for yeah. you. You know, there is a great statement, every genius must have a good secretary. Think about this. It's very important. Yes, genius people are tending to uh, spontaneously create like, uh, enormous things and invent uh, enormous uh, systems and structures and organize information in very unexpected way and combine and everything. But yet, yeah, there is always a person who will be following up, who will put all your thoughts together Think it through, organize it, revise it, evaluate it, analyze it, compare it, contrast it, and everything all the above, it requires organization, like internal organization, planning, and evaluation. So that's why back to the statement, every genius must have a good secretary, is very important, because someone has to do the math. Someone has to take your genius inside, your genius idea, and put it to work. Uh, back to my um, um, a practice uh, and uh, my experience working uh, on a, a, an international channel and interviewing people from different countries, it's interesting. There were so many geniuses, absolutely unbelievable scientists, and many of them were not successful. They were not famous. People would come to my program and say, back in 1965, I...